Thank you all for being here. Uh, five days ago, New York State and Seneca Nation of Indians ended their long dispute, allowing $89 million in casino revenues to flow to the city of Niagara Falls. It's an applause. The process was lengthy, and the city was stuck in the middle of an argument between two of our strongest partners. Now it's over. This is a great victory for the city of Niagara Falls, but now is the time for work, not in celebration. The settlement was most certainly not a surprise, at least not to me. From day one, I clearly stated my confidence in Governor Cuomo and his ability to reach a settlement that protected our city. That turned out to be the right calculation. Of course, it's very important to thank Governor Cuomo and his staff, led by Howard Glazer, Director of State Operations, as well as President Snyder and his staff for their work in resolving this dispute. Even when we had to make difficult decisions, deal with some elected officials who told the media that, this is a quote, it would be a miracle if we got that money, end of quote, or otherwise misrepresenting our finances to the media, my administration held the line. So it's not a celebration, it's not a miracle either. Most importantly, I want to thank the citizens of Niagara Falls for their faith and endurance. You saw through the political stand, kept a level head, and held the line right with us. It's another example of why I'm proud to be your mayor. Our citizens are asking good questions about the details of the settlement. That's why we scheduled this press conference as soon as possible to give you the next steps. So here's an outline of what it is that's, that happens next. Step one, we're told by the governor's office that the money will be deposited within the next few weeks. It will be a lump sum payment of $89 million, the period covered by the payments, from January 1st, 2009 to May 31st, 2013. Step two, we will repay the general fund for the expenses that would have been paid using new casino funds over the past three years. In total, that is a $22.7 million repayment. There's a miscommunication out there about old funds. Some of it, again, was started by elected officials that are supposed to have the city's best interest at heart, they're supposed to know better, they're supposed to understand these things. We do not owe vendors casino funds. There is no pile of past due invoices sitting someplace here. We were very conservative with casino funding in the budget before the dispute started. We built a reserve. When the casino funds stopped coming, we tapped into that reserve. We did not run out of reserves or hit the wall. My administration, including City Controller Maria Brown, had a plan that was tested, and it worked. While there were plenty of critics out there, facts are facts, our financial planning kept us out of harm's way for over 40 months. We avoided layoffs, tax increases, and the need for increased borrowing. We held the line. Why do people avoid those facts? Well, some people just can't stand good news. I want to show you something. This is a cash flow analysis spreadsheet. If I wasn't holding the microphone in one hand, I had two hands free, I'd rip it in half, okay? All right? But this is something that we did on a month by month, almost a week by week basis. This was the last of these analyses that we did. It was dated on the 29th of May, right? And it shows the city continuing to operate in the black uh, through uh, the month of October, right? It starts getting ugly in November and December, right? But it's only June and the situation has been resolved. Again, very, very successful in managing our cash flow in order to avoid uh, any short-term problems. That said, this morning, State Comptroller Tom Denampi released the state's financially distressed cities list and, no surprise, it included Niagara Falls. Today, also on the record, Controller Denapoli stated that he admired my administration's forthright and correct approach to the casino revenue shortfall, and that the $80 million announcement will help us, again, this is a quote, help navigate this very challenging uh, environment. Step three. As we are paid, we will release the funding owed to subrecipients listed in the compact agreement. Based on our estimate, 
the total subrecipient payment 2009 through the first five months of 2013 is $23.5 million. So that's the amount that we think is going to pass through the city. Again, we know the period that was covered, we know the total number of dollars, we don't have the year-by-year -year breakdown of when those dollars were earned, which means that it's difficult for us to apply the formulas and come up with exact numbers when we're working on that. The situation with the casino revenues created challenges for these organizations as well. Each of them plays an important role in the Niagara Falls community, and as always, we're going to stand by and assist them. In this case, that means expediting the use of their funds. Step number four, we will repay the tribal revenue fund, the tourism fund, for a total of $15.7 million. Step five, we will reestablish a responsible and healthy reserve fund. Right, the major consequences for our finances of this a situation is that our cash reserves, which were very healthy going into 2011, were, were very severely depleted. So we're going to reestablish the reserve fund. Being serious about maintaining cash reserves, so that type of, I call it, you know, small C conservative budgeting and planning, that's what saw us through the last three years when we get back on that track. And to be clear, this is not a slush fund, right? It's a reserve that's going to protect us from revenue shortfalls unforeseen expenditures in the future. Step six, we want to stabilize our bond rating. Unfortunately, some comments made by elected officials, including to Bonfire Magazine some weeks ago, implied that the city of Niagara Falls was not going to receive the casino funds and that we were broke. Obviously, these folks are operating with bad information. But words, especially from elected officials, mean something. In this case, they created a panic in financial markets. So there are consequences, in this case, financial consequences to our actions. A decreased bond rating could have cost us millions of dollars of interest in the bond market. Now that the casino funds are released, we're going to work with our banks and the rating agencies to bring back the sound investment grade ratings that we once enjoyed. And in fact, we've already been in contact with the bond rating agencies. Step seven, now we're getting to more of the fun stuff. The stuff that makes the city council members happy. We will get the most out of this construction season. Right? From day one, we've been dedicated to using casino funds to make quality of life and infrastructure improvements in the public realm. Now that the funds are being released, that commitment is going to continue. So in 2013, we're going to focus on street and sidewalk repairs. And today I want to announce that, again, subject to approval by the City Council, uh, that uh, we're going to uh, get moving on following paving projects, right? We have to have a commitment to do this because otherwise we're not going to be prepared to carry on the first half of paving projects that we've already outlined are completed. But here is a list of the streets that we would propose to pay. Uh, the total dollar amount is approximately $1.5 million of additional casino fund that pay we proposed to do in the second half of this season. Uh, Van Rensselaer, Chestnut, Chasm, Maple, Rankin, Vanderbilt, 19th Street from Pine to Niagara, Weston Avenue from 22nd Street to Hyde Park, <coughs> Cleveland Avenue from 18th Street to Hyde Park, Colvin Boulevard and Military Road from Scott to Cuba. I'm also going to consider going to council with other time sensitive uh, situations, things that need to be addressed sooner rather than later that we've been unable to get done in the past, mostly for lack of funds. For example, we've been operating without a grant administrator. We frankly have been having difficulty meeting our reporting deadlines. We don't want to jeopardize uh, any of the funds uh, that uh, we've received. We certainly don't want to have to pay back grant funds that have already been expended. So that's something we want to look at. Uh, we had a parking study here. Uh, we have uh, an obligation in our agreement with USA Niagara Development Corporation for the revitalization of the downtown parking garage to uh, put in place new parking control structures. Well, when the parking study was released, we had the money we set it aside. That's something we need to look at. Again, that's a revenue generator for the city. Right? We're looking at 
our capital projects to see are there, for example, building renovation projects. If the roof is leaking someplace, we held off on fixing the thing because we didn't have any money. If we can get it done uh, now, we don't have to go through another winter, right? So we're going back to the capital projects list, list, looking for things that are time uh, sensitive. We'll be back to city council with some of those in short. Step eight, get back on track with improvements to the public infrastructure. So we're going to try to make state good repair improvements now, eliminating the need to make more costly emergency repairs down the road. That's just uh, common sense, right? So we've already started reviewing our capital plan to update costs and to prioritize the order of reports of capital projects. Remember, our capital project list in some cases is considered for three years, right? So new things may have cropped up, the order of priorities may have changed, and we need to go back and to try to figure out what is the order of priorities, but also how have the potential cost of the projects changed, right? The cost estimate for what it might have cost us to do a particular project three years ago may have changed in some cases dramatically. So all of that stuff needs to be uh, updated. Uh, we know the citizens want to see bricks and mortar investments, so do we in the administration, we think so does the city. Uh, council, and so you'll hear something more from us uh, on that shortly. Right? Step nine, address recurring costs for debt service for the public safety complex, and property tax compensation for the four acres that was removed from the tax roll. Those are the casino funds that were currently in, in the budget uh, that uh, had to be addressed as a result of the depletion of the special projects fund balance over the last three years. Step 10, use casino funds to invest in our future. I believe in return on investment, using casino funds to invest in, match larger infrastructure, economic development projects. That just makes uh, sense. Uh, on the day that the governor came here to uh, make the announcement about the casino settlement, I recall that when uh, we had done the presentation of the Buffalo Billion Plan to the governor back in December, I had told him that I felt that Niagara Falls was never going to fall in the middle someplace. We were either going to be an anchor holding our region back or an engine pulling it forward. And I told him at that time I was determined that we would be an engine. But I also noted that as a result of the situation with casino revenues, it's been very, very difficult for us to play the same role as a partner in economic development that we were playing prior to this disruption in funds. Now that this situation has been resolved, it's an opportunity, as I said the other day, for us to shift into fast forward in terms of our uh, work on economic revitalization. We've been very successful in keeping on track here in the course of the recession and the absence of casino revenues, laying the foundation for an economic uh, recovery here. We've managed to move forward major projects, like our, our goal with the Housing Authority and Hope 6 would be an excellent example of that or our work with many other partners in the construction of the Culinary Institute downtown, that would certainly be uh, another. But uh, uh, we've invested past casino revenues, street repairs, infrastructure work, economic development. Now we want to try to get back on track that we were on prior to the disruption and flow of the revenues. And uh, we're going to continue to chart the course, make decisions that are going to diversify, to diversify our economy, support uh, tourism and green industries, encourage investment, and perhaps most important of all, create jobs for our citizens. So uh, with that, uh, I'm prepared to take the uh, questions, if you have questions. There's, well, what I've been saying for some time is that resolving the casino revenue situation doesn't uh, absolve us responsibility uh, to make sound decisions about our finances going forward. And uh, the comptroller's report uh, that listed us as a distressed city is a reminder of that. We face a lot of the same challenges as other upstate cities. Our uh, tax base isn't going fast enough to keep up with increased expenses. Most of our expenses, 80% of our expenses plus are going personal costs. So we just need to try to find a way to grow the tax base faster, but also to hold our costs down. And that's a multi-year effort. Uh, I'm going to ask the city council at their uh, next uh, meeting to adopt a resolution that will allow us to enter into uh, a program that's been established by the comptroller. We've also volunteered to participate in the 
the governor's financial restructuring assistance program. So we're looking for assistance from uh, the you know, outside experts and helping us to address these things. But uh, you know, the uh, casino revenues are earmarked for specific purposes. They don't impact every single aspect of the general fund, right? So you still got to do all the right things in the general fund to remain solvent going forward. And then the casino revenues give you that black leg up to grow the future tax base and to you know, address this uh, uh, situation in a much more fundamental way. If you look at what we've done with casino revenues in the past, this is a somewhat uh, you know, dated analysis, but we did it last fall for the response to the inquiry from the Buffalo News. Uh, but we found that as of that time, the city had received a little less than $70 million in casino revenues from the time the casino opened until three years ago when the Seneca stopped making payments. The city was required to pay more than 20 million of that to the local entities, right? So the city school district, Niagara Tourism Convention Corporation, uh, Memorial Medical Center, uh, Niagara Frontier Transit Authority, and the, the Underground Rail Heritage Commission, right? And then the city had 48 million dollars that we spent basically in the following way: about 29 million dollars on infrastructure improvements such as uh, road paving, large capital projects. That payments on the city's new courthouse and police station on Main Street and capital purchases of equipment, including paving equipment. About $13.5 million was spent on economic development projects, uh, including uh, demolitions also in that uh, total. Uh, about $2 million was spent on funding for police and fire departments, and about $3 million made up for reduction in tax assessments as a result of the loss of as he was created uh, originally. And so I mean, that sort of snapshot of where we've been over time, well, how we might expect that to, how might we expect that to evolve? Well, as we make additional road repairs, eventually we're not going to need quite the same investment in, in, in road infrastructure because the streets are getting paid. And then at that point, the percentage that you can use for economic development uh, goes up. So that's the sort of program that we're headed for. Uh, and I think surprisingly, perhaps uh, for some people looking back at it, 
Uh, there was a lot of consensus about this. A lot of different political groups, administration, city council. But we came together, together to get done the things that need to get done and keep moving forward under some very difficult circumstances. So what I'm really interested to see is what happens now. We've laid the foundation for economic recovery. The recession finally seems to be coming to an end. We just got our receiving problems. You know, that sounds to me like the bright future for the department. I am very excited to see what happens. Sal and Mako faced, the mayor was here from the Steam announcement, but they faced a very difficult situation. The city of Sal and is located almost entirely on land that is part of the Seneca Preservation. So as the Seneca purchases land, that land goes permanently off the tax rolls. So they've got some shrinking uh, tax base. There's, that's a very good contrast to the city of Niagara Falls. And our concern isn't the growing tax base, it's how fast it's going to grow, right? Each of these developments that comes online builds the tax base. Now, you know we've had some frustration in recent years with what we feel has been an excessively generous uh, piloting process at the uh, county level, so it's giving more tax breaks than projects we need in order to uh, go forward, and that uh, potentially hurts our ability to collect the tax revenues from those projects. But even with that said, there's absolutely no doubt uh, that the tax base is growing. Grows, the more people and more businesses are contributing, it's less of a burden on each taxpayer, right? You get more taxes on it, you raise the rate, and that's where we're headed. And uh, uh, again, the trends are very, very different here from what we've seen in uh, South Bank. South Bank has lost a huge amount of its tax base over the course of the last couple of years, and I don't know that anyone there can see any way that that trend is ever going to Going forward,
then some of these other situations, as I say, we've tried to address those at the time since the first, and try to consult the councils and the council on it. So uh, I think in terms of that specific expenditure, I think I'm on the record. Yeah. Well, thank you for hoping for getting to see all my here. My question is on item number nine, you said you pay for public safety property like debt service and property tax compensation. Right. And also you said you have both projects. Your highest priority under the summit, what's your highest priority on your list? As you said, stated, some three years and three established priorities. I did a quick summary of the um, monies rolled out in my calculation came to eight eighty five point four million dollars that only leaves three point six million I don't, math is correct but not to plug in yeah I can't comment on amateur accounting here we have a whole department here oh yeah I'm getting okay working. I do have you know we you know according to the ones that you have listed here um amateur um but for okay, those, those are not the figures, figures that were official figures, figures, figures that were working okay but to pay for the public safety um could you uh, explain that a little bit um, I don't yes know. Was, the uh, city uh, court and the city police department uh, headquarters were located in the building at 529 Park Boulevard. For many, many years, the city had been uh, criticized by the Office of Governmental Administration for providing substandard facilities. Uh, they had the ability at some point to start withholding uh, state aid and receiving from the operation of the courts. So those facilities are substandard. We had sort of reached the end of our road. The decision was made build a court facility and once again co-locate the ultimate review center where the old building was full of asbestos and so on. It's even more cost effective to build a facility for both the courts and the police department, right? And uh, that was about where it was when I left the city council in 2003. Uh, during the time I was out of city government, a uh, decision was made on the location, a decision was made to locate on Main Street as a way of trying to help you know, stabilize things and finalize things on Main Street. And it was the design for the building and so on, right? And it was expensive, right? And this is not a, uh, like a road project where we only have to pay 10% and get everything else reversed, right? It was basically not enough to pay for this. And in the end, the cost was something like $47 million, including some environmental and additional work that wasn't anticipated, right? That works out to uh, annual debt service payments around $5 million okay? The entire property tax levy for the city of Niagara Falls has been pretty well stagnant in the last five or six years. Right? We've not raised taxes, and the levy is stable and we at about $27 million. Say you decided that you were simply going to use property tax revenues to pay the debt service on the public safety budget. You would have had to have raised an additional $5 million annually on top of the $27 million. I mean, somebody got a calculator and figured the percentage. It's huge, right? It's a massive double digit tax increase sustained over the period that you're paying the debt service. So it goes down to some of those But that was the choice that faced the previous administration and the previous, previous city council. There's some overlap with city council members, but they said that, that sounds too expensive. Do we fund this with casino revenues? Or do we get casino revenues for at least 2016 and 18 or seven years after that? Well, it's an infrastructure project, clearly a capital cost, and it's related to public safety. And they made the decision it was a legitimate use of casino funds. You know what? I agree. And, and faced with those choices, I can't tell you whether they've done anything different. It was to go to the taxpayers and say, hey, your taxes are going 18%, not just this year, but we're going to sustain this, you know, while we're paying this public safety. So, what the point was, we're going to continue paying those costs using casino revenues. And in fact, we budgeted casino revenues to pay those costs in 2013, right? And that's why we felt that I couldn't present the budget until last fall, until I had some mechanism that would allow us to make that payment for something that went wrong in terms of the settlement. That's as we negotiated the kind of settlement, uh, the, uh, paying forward money something. Well, not thinking that we'd ever have to use that. Because I'm pretty confident back then we were going to end up. But it was just from accounting principles that it was irresponsible to budget those monies unless we had some sort of a uh, backup. I think that we are powerfully more trustees in providing that. Again, that's off the table. Because we're going to pay what we're over on. One more. 
more question here. Yeah. Uh, since we're going into infrastructure, what about work? Uh, I'm going to keep that up. We're, we, in fact, have meetings uh, scheduled to try to advance the project on the world pool. Uh, the project that the city has proposed involves the restructuring of the Rock Moses Parkway at the same time the world pool would be reconstructed. You know, there have been various ideas about whose responsibility is to fund such a project. The Congressman Higgins has been very aggressive in pursuing it. Now you have a project. And if it can be funded in that way, certainly that would be uh, close to the We're in a hurry for that now because with the new train station project, all of a sudden the link, the whirlpool, the link to the train station, nobody's not going to go there, and then the downtown, all of a sudden it's very weak link. We have to move before the developers are going to Yeah, you know, usually, yeah, but the pattern, what we try to do is do public realm improvements first, and then, you know, that helps for developers. And sometimes, we've been slow with public realm investments, developers start to begin, they start telling me, excuse me, what we need to do something about that road. I think that's about where we are right now. But that's, I think, the is planned on that in the next week, attempting to move that forward as quickly as possible. Thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen.